The Independent National Electoral Commission has announced February 18, 2023 as the date for the 2023 presidential election in the country. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, yesterday the federal government arraigned a former accountant with the Federal Ministry of Education, Mr. Matthew Inabo, on charges of diversion of over 45 million naira meant for the federal government's homegrown school feeding and health program. Inabo pleaded not guilty to the amended 24 counts read to him before Justice Iyang Ekwo of the Federal High Court in Abuja. He was accused of committing the alleged offenses while he served as the head of the account section of the school feeding scheme in 2007. In the charges filed by Aminu Alilu on behalf of the Attorney General of the Federation on October 12, 2020, Inabo was accused of fraudulently altering checks and making false representations to defraud the government through the school feeding scheme. The prosecuting counsel urged the court to remand the defendant in prison. However, Inabo was granted bail by the judge and the case was adjourned till December 7 for trial. At number 9, the Minister of Labour and Employment, Dr. Chris Ngige, met the leadership of the Academic Staff Union of Universities today, Thursday, in a bid to end the over six month strike by the university lecturers. A statement by the Deputy Director of Press and Public Relations at the Ministry, Charles Akban, said Ngige hosted the meeting with ASU in Abuja. ASU had embarked on an indefinite industrial action following its opposition to the government's move to enforce the use of the IPBIS for salary payments. The meeting also had in attendance the Minister of Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, the Accountant General of the Federation, Ahmed Idris, and the ASU leadership led by the President, Professor Biodun Oguyemi. Addressing journalists after the three-hour closed session, Ngige said ASU had shown how the youth as they developed could work, adding that the strike would continue. At number 8, the Defense Headquarters says the air component of Operation Handarin Daji has destroyed another bandit's camp in Katsina State, killing scores of the terrorists. The coordinator of Defense Media Operations, John Enenche, announced this in a statement on Wednesday in Abuja. Enenche said the airstrike was executed on Tuesday following credible intelligence reports and confirmatory surveillance missions, which revealed that bandits had established a camp in a location in the state. He said an appropriate force package of Nigerian Air Force fighter jets and helicopter gunships were dispatched to engage the location, which destroyed portions of the camp and neutralized some of the bandits. At number 7, the founder of Twitter, Jack Dozie, has expressed support for the nationwide NSAS protests. Dozie tweeted NSAS flag of Nigeria, retweeted links for donations and several articles favorable to the protests through his handle at Jack. A Nigeria payment gateway platform, Flutterwave, which is led by a former deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Tunde Lemu, had on Tuesday blocked the funding of the NSAS protest, which had risen to 16.7 million naira. Lemo claimed the money was from questionable sources, although reports had it that he made the move based on pressure from the CBN, whose governor, Godwin Emefile, had been meeting with youth in a bid to kill the protests. The alternative links for donations shared by the Twitter founder was to ensure that the sources of funding was not blocked. However, Dozi's support was criticized by a former presidential aspirant, Adamu Garba, who threatened to sue Dozi if the protests continued to escalate. Meanwhile, the Nigerian army on Wednesday warned subversive elements and troublemakers from disrupting democracy. In what could be described as a veiled warning to the NSAS protesters, who have been occupying the streets for the past one week and demanding for the reform of the Nigeria police, the Nigerian army threatened to deal with the situation decisively. At number 6, the Senate has passed the 2021 budget for second reading after a three-day debate on its general principles. The budget was passed for second reading at the floor of the Senate on Thursday. The Senate President, Ahmed Lawan, asked the Committee on Appropriation to work on the fiscal document and report back in four weeks. The 13.08 trillion naira budget estimate was presented to the Joint Session of the National Assembly by President Muhammad Buhari last Thursday for the consideration of the federal lawmakers. At number 5, Anonymous, a group of popular hacktivists, have allegedly hacked into the websites of multiple government agencies in Nigeria, including that of the Nigeria Police Force, in support of the ongoing NSAS protest against police brutality in the country. In a video that surfaced online on Thursday, the group issued a 72-hour ultimatum to the federal government to grant the demand of the protesters. The group also shared a document that seemed to contain confidential information on operatives of the dissolved special anti-robbery squad, including bank details. Their claim could, however, not be confirmed as the group did not list the website of agencies it allegedly had. However, the Deputy Police Public Relations Officer, CSP, Aremu Adeniran, said the claim that the NPF website was hacked was not true. 
insisting that the site was not infiltrated and that no such data claimed to be in the possession of the hackers was on the Nigeria police website. Also on Thursday, Federal Capital Territory Administration banned all forms of protest in Abuja, claiming the demonstrations were in violation of the COVID-19 protocols. At number four, after attaining the highest level in 28 months in September, Nigeria's headline inflation has climbed further. This can be seen in the latest figures by the National Bureau of Statistics. The report published on Thursday by the Statistician General of the Federation, Yemi Kale, through his verified Twitter handle, showed that the latest figure rose from 13.22% in August to 13.71% in September. The MBS said Nigerians paid more for food during the month as food inflation figures soared from 16% in August to over 16.66% in the month under review. At number three, the federal government has approved the reopening of all National Youth Service Corps orientation camps on November 10th. The Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Dari, made this known in a tweet on Thursday. The tweet says the resumption of the NYC orientation camp for prospective youth coppers has been approved and opens on November 10th, 2020. Full COVID-19 protocols will be enforced. The federal government of Nigeria had ordered the closure of the NYC orientation camps nationwide due to the coronavirus pandemic on March 18. At number two, aviation unions on Thursday shut down the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria in Lagos in order to frustrate a planned meeting of the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, with aggrieved workers. It was reported that as early as 9 a.m., the unions had already mobilized for the one-day strike. The unions include the National Union of Air Transport Employees, Air Transport Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Association of Nigerian Aviation Professionals, and the Nigerian Union of Pensioners. The unions had issued a seven-day ultimatum to fund management over salary areas. The unions are demanding the remittance of 105.3 billion naira actual valuation as at 2016, remittance of all pension deduction to the pension fund administrators, immediate payment of child education grant, leave allowance, furniture grant, gratuity, COVID-19 palliatives, outstanding salaries, debt benefits, amongst others. Finally, at number one, the Independent National Electoral Commission has announced February 18, 2023 as the date for the 2023 presidential election in the country. This was announced by the chairman of INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, on Thursday. In his goodwill message at the inauguration of the Special Ad Hoc Committee on the Review of the 1999 Constitution, the INEC chairman told members of the House of Representatives that Nigeria is 855 days away from the 2023 general elections. Always remember to wear your mask, wash your hands, and stay safe. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.